Hello, and welcome to the first installment of HD Rookie. What's HD Rookie about? Well, it's not really so much about the flash and the whiz-bang effect. No, it's more about how we done it. And I'm going to go on a journey with you on what I did along the way to create HD productions and to stream and watch HD video throughout my house. Now, I'm no expert by any sense of the means, really. I'm just getting into this, so I'm going to stumble along the way, which means a lot of these installments will probably be me correcting something I said in a previous installment, but I figure we can learn together, and maybe if I'm really lucky, some of you out there will have done something that I'm trying to do, and you can give me tips along the way, and we can share information back and forth, and if I learn something from one of you out there, I'll share it with everybody else. Now, I plan to cover all kinds of things, right? I plan to cover how I stream HD video to three different HD TVs throughout my house simultaneously from one single network share. Sure, sounds fancy. I also plan to cover how I built this home recording studio out of my garage and how I do a green screen that when you look at it from a separate candle, uh, camera, candle, it looks like a gray screen. Even the audio that I'm using, I'll cover all that. But first, I thought I would, I would start with something that's applicable to all of us. Even if you're just watching HD media or if you're recording and editing HD media, you need to be able to store it. And that's what this big guy is right here. One of the problems I have is a single episode might be 30 gigabytes in size if I use compressed lossless codecs. So how do I store all that? If you figure I do two, three episodes a week, that really adds up fast. Well, I have the Drobo and I love it, but it's not quite fast enough for what I want to accomplish. I want to have multiple machines do network rendering off of a single network resource. Now, the, the Drobo I do use for, for streaming using the Drobo Share, but again, the speed is around 13 megabytes a second, not nearly what I need. So I started off on a search. I looked at different products, and there's ready NASes and things like that that plug directly in the network, but they're all kind of limited. That's when I came across this guy. Check this out. $350 shipped with a one terabyte Western Digital Caviar Black Drive. Now that's a fast drive. On top of that, free shipping, no tax. Love that. Eight bay external eSATA unit. Check this guy out. Love it. Stores eight hard drives. Um, specs say up to two terabytes, but then you go on their sites and it looks like the individual drives could actually go from there. Two eSATA ports on the back, connects in super fast connection, comes with an eSATA PCI Express card. Very nice. So I don't even have to worry about spending, I don't even have to worry about going out and buying an extra card if I don't have to. Uh, it is PCI Express 1X, which means it could theoretically be a bottleneck, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. And of course, it comes with the two eSATA cables necessary to hook it up doesn't have hardware RAID built in. It does come with software to do software RAID. Not a problem. I'm actually going to be using this in JBOD mode. Or I guess what I should say is I'm going to be using these as each individual drive will represent itself to the operating system. And then I'm going to pool it there. I don't want the overhead of RAID. Now, true, I could maybe get additional performance out of a RAID 0 type setup. But the reason I'm not doing that is I want to be able to add drives as I go. I'm not going to fill this thing with eight drives immediately. I'll start with one drive. In fact, I have a... Uh, the uh, one terabyte caviar black that it came with right here. I'm going to be putting that in this unit, hooking it up and going. Now I've powered it on. It has a 120 millimeter fan here in the back. Not loud. Good, quiet, nice cooling. Um, the power supply is fanless, so it's only the one fan there. I'm not sure when you get it filled with drives how it's going to be temperature wise. But my thought is I'll plug this sucker via eSATA into my file server and share it out. And then that'll be it where I do a network storage for my different projects that I'm working on. And then when I'm rendering throughout the network, each machine will connect to this unit over probably Samba file services and uh, pull down the files it needs. I'm hoping that it works pretty well. The reviews online are pretty good, and I figured eight bays, eSATA, Shipped with a one terabyte drive. How do you go wrong? Um, this is the uh, this unit here is from Sans Digital. I don't know if this deal is around anymore. It, it was a pretty pretty limited offer, I think. But either way, I'll give you an update in a future episode. Now, if you have any questions on how we do anything in our productions over at JupiterBroadcasting.com, I'd love to hear from you. Hit me up on Twitter. I am twittercom LAS. There's also that email thing, but I'm trying to avoid that these days because at the time of this recording, I'm like 200 emails behind in my inbox. So Twitter, 140 characters makes life a little easier. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed the first installment of HD Rookie. 
I am the rookie, and hopefully we can learn together.